Uh, we're basically going to simulate a production line to build something. Um, unfortunately, because of the space, we could just set up one. So we'll be able to accommodate roughly, we could do five per table. So five fours are about 20 people who can actually play the game. We could do six as well, but, but let's see. So if you guys could just come ahead uh, and arrange yourselves around each table. So each table is a station and we can accommodate about five to six per station. So that's team one right there. Uh, be around it, uh, so three that side, three that side, this side, sorry. This is team two, team three and team four. Um, don't crowd yourselves, come this side as well. So a couple of you on that side, a couple of you on this side, will be great. And sorry, the rest of you all will need to uh, be spectators today. Yeah, come, come this way. Uh, we chair, hata sakta hai kya? No, so we need six per table. Okay. Yeah, so after that, the rest will need to sit down as well. We need two more here, please. One here. One here, two there. Production line. Um, and the intent is to run a game and hopefully learn a little bit about Lean. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume here that all of you are familiar about Lean and Lean practices, Lean methodologies, right? Um, so the hope is that we, we play a game and we learn a few concepts as we go. Cool? All ready? Yay! All right. Okay, so quickly uh, about Lean. Um, so Ford, Ford's conveyor belt is extremely well known, right? Uh, back in the World War times, uh, the, the most famous thing was that Ford was able to produce a bomber and R. A bomber is a plane that actually bombed various countries. So the, the, the famous thing then was that we were able to produce one bomber and R. And that, I think that's, that's extremely, extremely Crazy, I think. Um, post that, there was the Toyota age, right? Where Toyota built the lean production system, which, which we are going to try and explore today a little bit. Uh, and the key with the Toyota production system is what they call as the just-in-time production. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit more. And the concept of Kaizen. Um, both these eras as such have re revolutionized the, the industry. Um, and software, IT, where we are all from primarily, uh, we have tried to extract some of the best practices from these two eras and uh, implement them in our worlds. So again, we look at that. Um, this is Taichi Ono. He is known as the father of, of the Toyota production system. Uh, the, the main message that he taught was about waste and how it's extremely important to eliminate that waste. Here's a summary of what are the seven kinds of waste in the manufacturing uh, system. This morning, Joshua talked a little bit about this. He tried to bring in uh, some of the learnings from the manufacturing world into how we have implemented them or he, we can implement and learn in our software world. So again, today's key will be trying and identifying waste and then trying to eliminate it. So in our everyday life, it becomes hard for us to, to first of all point out in, in our system, this, is, this definitely is waste. And then once we've identified, we need to then do things to eliminate that waste. Okay, quickly then, here's, here's the format in which we're going to run today's session. Uh, we're going to do three iterations. Um, again, assuming everyone knows what iterations are. Yes. Yes, iteration sprints a small period in which we'll try something out and we'll do three such short uh, phases of that. So we'll do a hands-on activity, we'll rest retrospect on what we just uh, performed in that hands-on activity, we'll learn and adopt, and then we'll do iteration two. So that's the cycle we're gonna, uh, we're gonna follow today. Again, we're gonna simulate a production line. Uh, you have four stations, that's team one and that's team four. So something needs to start in that station there, needs to follow through 
and an end product needs to come out at station four. In that, at the end of station four, we're gonna have a customer or market really. So we're gonna simulate someone who's gonna play that for us. And we're gonna build a Lego house. Yay. No excitement, right. Okay, chop chop. So uh, really quickly, uh, if you guys go back to your tables and see, there's an instructions sheet. Each table has an instruction sheet, if you could turn that over. So first look at the non-colored one, yeah. Quickly take a read through that. instructions of what that team needs to do. Um, no, 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 don't stop. Okay, team three and team four, you have, you have another sheet with you guys, right? So that's yours. Uh, ah, it's fine. You can actually just pull this up. Each of you can have one of them. Yeah. And team four has another instruction sheet. Okay, pat pat, quick, quick second before we start playing with Lego. I can't whistle else I would have, um, sorry, attention, attention everyone. Someone please whistle for me. Sorry, quick, quick minute and we'll, we'll start playing. Um, so like I said, at the end, at the end of four, we're gonna have a customer. I'm gonna play customer. Um, and this customer is really gonna give you what the market demand is, right? So when we build something, as we do in IT, we, we build it for end users. And I'm gonna play that end user and I'll be sitting right at the end. Uh, just before we start, we're going to measure success. At the end of each iteration, we're going to see how well we did. So what we're going to do is, each iteration, I1, I2, I3, we'll do a quick count of the inventory, and we're going to count houses we've, that we've actually built. So each house, uh, sorry, each uh, inventory block, each Lego block costs something. We're building a real house here, right? So each uh, Lego box costs about 10 rupees. And at the end of the production line, the house that we actually built costs about 1,000 rupees. Really cheap, right? Um, so that's what we're going to count at the end of each iteration so that we know we're going to measure how well we've done. Right, OK. So quick in inventory check. Team 1 has a box of Lego, which is called A. You need to follow your instructions, pull out stuff, build it, push it over to inventory B. Team 2 has inventory B. You need to pick up stuff from inventory B, that's your inventory. Pick it up, follow your instructions, push it over to C. Three does the same thing, pick up from C, build, push to D. Four does the same thing, pick up from D, do your thing, and you need to showcase it to the customer at the end. Okay? Yes? Question, question, question. Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. So each, each, the inventory cost is going to be every single brick of Lego on the table. They're going to try and calculate that. That becomes inventory cost. Okay? And yes, there will be time. You'll be timed. Okay, any other questions? Ready to go? Okay, we're ready to go then. Oh, I need to, I need that, I need that. Oh, I don't need that. Okay, and I'm going to measure you all, so start. Start of iteration one, go. Uh, can I be your customer? Tell me after 30 seconds.
You have instructions, follow your instructions. Beep. I'm asking for it. ये बंद में ऑन कैसे करते हैं यहाँ से बी माय सेक माय सेकंड डिमांड Are there any houses that got built? Come on, come on. Stations are not supposed to talk to each other, please. Remember, you're sitting in completely different buildings. Sure. <laughs> People at the back, feel free to come and observe ahead if you want to. I, I feel, almost feel bad for you. Ten more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, stop. Hands off the table, hands off the table. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Okay. Customer showcase time. Yes, team four, please, please sell things to me. I'm going to buy it. So we have a suit. Hmm. The stairs are a little off, but okay. Sorry, fail. No, we want to Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All those cards there are valid. Including this COVID bin that Rick Yes. So, this is a blue box and this is a red box. Okay. Is that actually how it's supposed to look? Not really. So, we'll offer a discount. Okay. Uh, not really. No, I mean, okay, so we had a yellow built, but it sort of crumbled and people died or would die. Um, this one doesn't have a staircase, so no one can go into it. This one is not what I asked for. So, sorry. Any other? I have a question. Yes. Uh, did you change the requirement when the is going on? No, I, I simply, <laughs> I simply laid out. I can get the game. Okay. This was this was your yeah okay so let's spend a couple of minutes so this was your inventory to pick up from yes you had something to start off with but you had an inventory I think your instruction is quite clear right pick up from D walk to D pick it up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sorry take enough of one color yes. So whatever we play 
case of all these mm -hmm. pieces of paper, they can... Yes, yes, so this goes here. Just leave it here, it's for them to pick up as they can. Any any confusions here? How did you guys do? Wow, nice. Good job. Okay. Right, okay. Is there a mic? That okay. Okay, cool. Okay. You weren't supposed to talk, cheetahs, but okay. How did you guys do? Yeah, we did all right. We we uh, got the colors sorted right. Uh huh. Uh, the only confusion was there were some colors which were not there, so mm -hmm. we tried and just thought maybe that's waste, so we got them back into the box. Oh. <laughs> and oh. then we weren't sure what exactly they were wanting, so we were trying to judge what they wanted, and they were trying to push it only as and when required. So technically, you guys did nothing. We only sorted. <laughs> We thought it would understand things. Okay. Did you pick up responsibilities right, in terms okay. of colors? So, okay. okay, okay. Good, good job. Um, can we do a quick inventory cost? So just very rough numbers of how many box, uh, bricks you have on your table. <laughs> what about you guys? 40, yeah. Team 1 has about 40, about 100 here. How many do you guys have, roughly? Wow. 15, 15 here from Lithuania. Or here, I mean, and here? Uh, okay, sure. Fair. How much is that? About 20 here. Yeah, so houses attempted were 3, but 0 all rejected, so 0 houses built. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we had about 190 pieces in total across the production line and we attempted to build three houses but they all got rejected so zero houses were actually built. So you have a question? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask if we can interact with other uh, stations so mm -hmm. that we tell them what kind of details we need here. Mm -hmm. No. No? <laughs> you are, you, you guys are, okay. So I mean, that's a tough situation, right? Yeah, because yeah. they're working on the details that we don't need here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Don't, don't spoil the game. You, we, we'll get to it. We'll get to it in a second. Yes. Yes, that, that's exactly where we're going to get to. So, give me a second. So, we had about one to 190 pieces unused across the production line and zero, um, zero houses built. Okay, so just just trying to go back to the retrospective, right? You guys said there wasn't any communication, hence the design you guys knew, but they were still throwing some things over to you guys, right? There wasn't any communication. Any anything else that you guys think didn't go well? The requirements kept changing. So requirements kept changing, okay? The demand, the customer demand was kept changing, kept increasing. Okay, anything else? Correct. Yeah, just station four anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Fair enough? Absolutely, absolutely. So spot on, right? So the number of unused bricks over how many sold. So in the inventory line, first of all, we have a, we have quite a lot of inventory that just never got used, right? So that's almost like your work in progress, isn't it? In your typical uh, development cycle, you keep you end up keep pulling in things as the business wants, but you don't really manage how it's going to flow out not knowing what the business wants, wants, wants because no one knows the big picture and there's a lot of work in progress, WIPs, right? So what is it that we did? Really quickly trying to understand this, this concept. Uh, this is called the pull or the push concept of lean. So what we actually ended up doing here is that we predicted what the market wanted, right? Team one, two and three and four actually. As we started, we had no idea that um, the customer wanted a blue car, blue house, sorry. 
So we did not know what the customer wanted. We predicted the market demand. We started doing mass production, right? Take the inventory, start building what we need to do, throw it over. And we achieved economies of scale. So what this system helps is the unit cost for the cost of per unit keeps reducing as we build more and as we keep mass producing things, right? So this is called uh, upward, upward information, correct? So we did not know what the, the end goal was, but we kept building things through and through. This is exactly what Mr. Henry Ford, Ford's era was. He said things like, I want to build a car of any color as long as it's black. The intent here was, I'm going to push what I think I want to build to the market, not really understanding what the market wanted. Tying back to our, our world, how many products do we see failing on an everyday basis? There's uh, the Yahoo Buzz, there's Ping that Apple that not very recently had uh, launched, Friendster, Orchid. So there are lots of products. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it, give you an example of some of the websites that, were, that have failed in the recent past. But really, what, what, what did each one of these companies miss on? They missed on trying to understand what is it that the market wanted and build something, throw it out there, and fail. OK, so let's learn and adopt now. What we're going to try and do differently is exactly what you guys said. Let's first understand what the market wants, right? We'll, demand, we'll build only for demand. We won't build more. We won't build less. We'll build only as per and how much the, the market wants. And we'll adapt to that customer or that market demand. Okay? So make only what is needed, only when it is needed, and only in the amount it is needed. That's what we're going to try and implement in the next iteration now. So why would we, what, why would we want to do that? So that there is no waste, right? If we build extra things, we're going to end up having a lot of work in progress that's going to go, uh, end up being waste, and we won't have partially done work. Whatever we start off with, we'll make sure the production line finishes it. OK, so quick summary. What we did initially was the push system, which is just in case production. Just in case the market wants it, I'm going to build it anyway. As opposed to what we're going to try now, is just in time production. What is, I'm going to build only what the, what the demand is. Along with this, we're going to try another concept called Kanban. I'm sure all of you all have heard what Kanban is. Anyone want to go out, give it a go? What is Kanban? Please. Thank you. Uh, two main goals in Kanban is well, one is to uh, minimize work in progress or work in process. Uh, the second goal is you maximize your flow of your system. So you, you imagine uh, it, it changes the way that you look at your workflow system. Uh, you, you want to maximize flow of uh, Houses here, in yep. this example, yep. uh, software as work items. So, yep. you, so you want to uh, remove any impediments, bottlenecks, so that the flow is managed, uh, is maximized from one end to another. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Any any additions to that? Kanban, if you've used it in your in your work. Yeah. Sorry, you have to come here. Uh, Kanban uses some kind of signs, which actually gives a uh, intimation to the previous or the raw material people about that it's time for replenishment and by then they will fill in. So it would not be just piling up an entry at any corner, yeah. but it will be just when the sign is up, that means I still have something more to go, but I need by that time uh, the raw material to flow into my line. Yeah. So those are signs which is used to uh, convey this message. Absolutely. So spot on. Kanban is nothing but an indicator, a signal of some kind. Starbucks, any of our coffee shops. When you go to the, to, the, to the person to buy a coffee, they do mark a quick tick, which is what goes back into the kitchen for them to build, right? An indicator of some sorts. Again, BCAP, other. All of these are signs that are used so that inside the kitchen, what they cook is for the customer demand. It's that simple. Okay, so we're going to try and build that into our production line now. So if you notice, each of your inventory that you are supposed to either, that you're supposed to pull from or push to, um, you have colored cards, right? Now what we're going to try differently is unless your card, the card that you're supposed to push to is free, you're not going to build anything. Let's take an example. So right now, 
Sorry? Yeah, could you just sort the pieces for color? Yeah, thank you. You guys as well. Everyone just sort it for color. So, so let's spend them some time understanding this before we start because otherwise there will be confusion again. Okay? So what we're going to try and do, each of you, you, team one has something already that you've pushed. Right? That's not your inventory. That's the inventory you've pushed to. Your inventory is sitting that side. Correct? Don't pull in anything new until any of these cards get free. So for example, if team two pulls in a yellow, that means the that space is empty. That's an indicator for you to actually pull inventory in and start working on your process. Fair? Exactly the same thing for you. That's the inventory to which you will push to. Correct? Pull in things only after one of those boxes are free for you to build something for. Fair? Same here? No confusion? You're pulling from there and you're pushing to D. You guys are pulling from D and you're pushing to E. That's the customer. No confusion? Any questions? Any any last minute questions before we go on? Yeah. You need to figure that one out. For right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to so the, the customer feedback will be the same or the customer market demand will be the same. I will be talking to team four and telling them what needs to be built. So you don't start until I've told you what needs to be built, right? Okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to reverse the process, start from there and build only what's required. Again, I request you not to talk. The intent of this exercise is to show you how only the indicators, which is the colored cards, are going to help that communication flow right through. So you don't need to scream and tell them that they've asked for a yellow. <laughs> right? That's, that's the intent of this. So don't talk. Remember you're sitting in different departments. Okay. Ready to go? Start. Oh, wait. I have to come back. Okay. Go. Hey, get out of the You have another 30 seconds to go. <laughs> Sorry, the demand has changed. Yeah, please do not forget quality assurance. People need to live in these houses.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Hands, hands off the table. Okay? How did that go? Better? Okay. Before we retrospect, let's do a quick count again. 25 plus 30. Please do the math. Okay. Team 4? No, that's bid. We don't count the... Actually, I have to do market. Will the, has the market... Wait, wait, has the market bought anything? Much better. I like. Okay, so accept. That, that's one good. That one's good. Oh, we have another broken one. Right. Okay, so we got two build houses sold for thousand bucks each, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So what was our total inventory? Hundred. One zero five. Okay, that's. Okay. Okay, and how many build houses did we sell? So we earned, what was our total profit? Okay, and what was the profit in the first iteration? Brilliant. So we are still net net, not doing very well. Okay, so let's quickly find out how this went. What worked? My car. Oh yeah. Anyone, what, what, what do you think worked this time? You only put what we needed. Don't go, my teacher. Thank you. We only pull the block that we needed because we knew in advance what colors are to be done. We didn't okay. just pick up uh, as much as we found on the other table. Right. Okay. The team was feeding me continuously as to which pieces to pull in. So right. I did not pull in any extra pieces. Right. Time. Right. Okay. Because there was a coordination uh, across the line. There was coordination. Right. Okay. Any other? Produce, what, uh, produce only what is needed. Sorry? Produce only what is needed. Right, yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. So what do we think didn't work? We, because we've still not done very well, right? So what do you think hasn't worked very well? Any Anything that's bugging you? Sorry? Right, you're saying you were idle, lots of time, lots of inactive time. Any other? Didn't know how much quantity, okay? Right, right. But again, it, even me noticing here, you three teams kept staring at them and like, get them faster, man. Yep, yep. Unused, yes. Very good point. So there was inventory in the other cards that didn't actually move ahead. And hence it was still sitting as work in progress. Fair enough? Okay. So that's that's exactly what the problem in this, this particular model is, right? That there was stations that were waiting for a signal to come to them which again marks as waste right you ideally want every single station to be continuously doing something like a well oiled machine now i'm not sure that because the stations actually get value to their product why don't you get from the stations ah. take okay we'll we'll come back to that one in in just a second so what hasn't gone well is what's called Mura or just un unevenness of work dist distribution, right? Again, and which ended up you guys waiting for something, a signal to come to you, which is again based. What we want to do is clear the bottleneck, right? Clearly this it seemed to me that station four was overworking and they were the bottleneck before they could tell what, what needs to be done next. Um, typically, again, going back to manufacturing, they try and align their production systems in a way that's U-shaped, which helps workers to actually go and help out a bottleneck, right? Again, coming back to the concept of being a generalist versus being a specialist. Right now, each of you all are specialist stations. You do only what you're told to do without actually knowing... Yeah. Uh, 
creating a pool system make uh, bottlenecks evident? Because when you push the work, you never know where the bottleneck is. Yes. As long as you create a pool system, it's obvious. Absolutely. Very good point. Thank you. Did, did we all catch that? No. Yeah. Could, could you repeat that one? Uh, when you create a pool system, uh, it becomes obvious where the bottleneck is. Whilst when you keep pushing the work, everybody seems to be busy, but you never know what's the, where the bottleneck is. Because you kept waiting, you weren't allowed to do the next thing before there was a space made. So this is also true for software development when you have Kanban systems. Absolutely. So a typical story was, again, assuming a lot of you will use this in your everyday work, right? So you have something that's ready to be picked up by the devs in dev, in QA, which then goes into production. What generally happens is your QA line gets, gets filled up, right? QA always is playing catch up. What should we do then? An ideal is to try and put your Kanban limits on each of your columns so that there isn't a bottleneck, right? Like he said, we've identified that there's a bottleneck and hence we're trying to solve that problem. So what will happen if after that line, if there's another card that comes in, you technically want to stop work in your dev side, right? And push, sorry, push devs to actually help QA. Have, have any of you all tried this in your, in your work? Okay, <coughs> do you think it helps? Absolutely, very good point. So not to say that the Kanban limits are only for QA. It should ideally be flowing right from the beginning of the requirement till the very end. Does this make sense? Do you think you would actually try this if, if you're not already in your work? You know, uh, I see this in many organizations when uh, the project management office keeps working on requirements while they cannot release something because the Q, QA is, is not ready, right? And, Absolutely, and, yeah. And in that case, uh, improving your requirements only makes uh, the problem worse because mm -hmm. it increases rework and so on. Absolutely, absolutely. So you want to try this, you want to go and not accept more work until what you have in your queue is actually finished. But then the problem of customer demand arises again, right? What if you're actually working on something that was a priority yesterday, but the demand has changed. I mean, your product owner has come and told you, change it, what would, what would you do then? Okay? We're, we're coming to the end of our workshop, what we're going to try and quickly try out is what's called continuous improvement or Kaizen. So Kaizen is again, um, and this is extremely <coughs> fascinating, I thought. So back in the Toyota manufacturing um, production line, one of the very key elements that they talk about is it's not a manager or a scrum master or an agile coach who comes and tells the production workers, you should change this or you should get better at that. The intent is that the workforce itself has this concept, has this attitude in their mind, and they continuously want to improve in what they're doing. Again, try and tying it back to what Joshua was mentioning this morning as well, right? You want to be able to identify what's not working and start coming up with ideas of how do I best change it, because really the workforce knows best rather than a manager coming and pushing down a solution that's actually not gonna work at the end. So we're gonna try this. But what we're also going to try is exactly what uh, this gentleman suggested. We're going to change the production line and, and almost revamp it. We're going to say every single uh, station is a production line in itself. So as the demand, customer demand, I'm going to tell each of you what the, the demand is. And each station needs to build a house on their own. Does that make sense? We'll make another one last change. Okay, so actually, quick question back to mostly three of you. What do you think will be your will be the question mark here? How would you build the house? You don't know the specifications, do you? Okay, any thoughts on how we could we could get over this problem? 
Sorry? Interact with the customer. What else? Sorry, what did you say? Spread the expertise. You see what we're doing here? We've, we've tried to continuously improve. We have a problem. As a team, we are trying to think of what's the solution. A solution is? Absolutely. So we're going to try and integrate station three into station one and two. All of, each of you all were specialists. We're trying, going to try and change that. We're going to bring in generalists along with specialists and make that as one coherent unit. So if you folks could merge with these guys, you guys become the expertise experts of building houses, right? So you want to come in and uh, help each of these units? I'll give one spec on each Bring along the spec. I have a spec as well, don't worry. We have two specs actually. So come along. Please be the experts who build houses. Merge yourselves with team one, two, and three. I know it's a bit crowded. But remember, they are not your consultants who will only tell you what to do. You need to work as a team. And I'm going to spend another one minute for you guys to introspect and see what, how you want to organize yourselves. Sorry, did you catch that? So spend a minute within each... Spend a minute within each team and think about how you're going to organize yourself to build what you're expected to. Just a quick minute. Good job. You have 40 seconds left, sorry. Remember, you don't have to 
build just one house at a time? You are eight of you all on a table. Why are you building just one house at a time? You want to build as many houses as you can. Demand has changed. If you want more inventory, go over to the Lego box. I see houses that are not fully made, built. Uh, I forget. It was red, I think. It was red. Right? Are we out of time?
Minister. Oh, man. You guys should have the show. transportation, all of these sign up as waste. Go on. Sorry, can we not do that? We'll do it at the end. Sorry, I'm looking for the mic. Ah, please. We make the specialist decision list, right? I mean, but the entire, I mean, so we created a few others here more, but the entire essence is like, if you did it, what I could see is we produce more waste. Right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, the difference there would have been, um, so two observations that I had. One was, I felt that you guys were building just one house at a time. Or not many. I mean, you were six, seven of y'all. Right? Uh, and the second one was, we didn't actually know the demand at some point. I think it was this team. So, again, a very good point made, right? We've actually not reduced the waste. But the ideal thing that we should have achieved here is zero inventory in all houses built. Right, I'm being kicked out. Um, but I, the only point I'm trying to make is back to Kaizen, right? Here's another opportunity for you as a team to sit together, see what's not worked, and see what you can implement to improve that waste. Right, so no, don't want, you actually don't want your scrum master, agile master, whatever, to come and tell you what to do. You want to, as a team, Implement what's what's the right solution ahead. Okay. Okay. So quick thoughts. Um, coming back to software, here is drawing a parallel between kinds of waste that we actually see on a, in an everyday life. So think about it. Hopefully next time I I, uh, I hope to run sessions that talk about ways to implement Kaizen, which I think is the core of any any kind of process that you typically want. So thank you. I hope you had fun. We've been literally being thrown out. Thanks a lot. <laughs>